I just want to go through basically what um, sort of is a, is a more advanced version of what I went through at IIW last week. Um, but let me frame this. I'm working with a few groups in Canada here to look at the basically what it feels like right now is that there's a need for a digital wallet. Everybody says, you know, your wallet will do that. There's this concept of, okay, what is exactly the wallet doing? If we talk deep into the sovereign dev layer, um, a wallet is pretty dumb storage. It's for key management. It's for storage of encrypted information, making sure that those keys are stored in the, uh, in, in the, in the trusted execution environment, that type of thing. And then we get into agents. Um, we got into a bit of a discussion with Doc Searles just prior to IOW. He and I chatted a little bit at IOW that the term agent, uh, he certainly, I think, detests is probably pretty good coverage of the word. But I just wanted to go through with this group that I mentioned last week, uh, just a few slides here. Um, talking about what is an agent, what is a wallet, also really what is an app. I just wanted to go in through this. So basically, as I mentioned, sort of the dev view is that really a wallet is just storage. It's just a place where you put stuff. But then you look at it, if you look at the physical world, there's certainly a lot more to my wallet than just the fact that it stores stuff. I can put stuff in it. I can sort of organize stuff. But the wallet isn't doing any of that. It's just holding it. So we have this analog in the in the uh, you know meat space that is good, but it's not because I use my wallet in many different ways. But the wallet itself does not really affect change in the world. So I wanted to just cover off uh, an early set of uh, let's say it's it's not incredibly early. We're looking to push this this report. By the way, I'm working on. I don't normally do reports, but I'm working on a report with folks to try to clarify what wallets are, what agents are, what it means in the context of, of uh, what people need, where there may be a role. We did that presentation at IOW, what is in your wallet and who is in your wallet? Because I see that there's a role for other parties to help me with my wallet, to participate in my wallet, whether they're uh, an agent that is purely running for me, meaning I have deployed and I'm running that agent, or whether a third party, or as Doc would call it in the attention economy, a fourth party, has this tool that is taking care of me, an agent in that case, a fourth party that is, that is doing these things for me. So I've got sort of three models of a wallet and agent. Um, and I just wanted to flip through these. Um, I'll record this and put up just a little small segment of this, of this presentation, so that we don't have to necessarily go through the notes. But I'll share this out to the whole group as well afterwards. I'm looking at three different levels. The full bowl, what I would call heavyweight agent and wallet setup. Um, a very lightweight agent where it's kind of like the minimum needed as well as a minimum wallet in order for a wallet to work and sorts that I can actually you know take stuff in and out of the wallet, put stuff in the wallet, organize a little bit, there's some minimum capabilities I need. And this is by no means definitive, but I got a, a starting point, I think. So I'm looking at like, if I look at an advanced kind of a heavyweight um, agent and wallet setup, I've got three main concepts here just for consideration. One is, what are the things that an agent or agents, could be many different agents that comprise these capabilities, we don't necessarily need them all. What are they doing? And I'm just gonna read through them. I'll, again, I'll share, the, I'll share the deck as well as the uh, um, recording. Um, things like signing documents, uh, messaging. You know, this is a, a core thing of agents is the, why we're on this call is, you know, create that sovereign HL Indy agent protocol so that we can make that consistent. We know that some agents are gonna to need to do routing. Um, there's a need for a trust registry. I've got another diagram next. This becomes a little more clear where we know that, for example, that that did that signed this document is, as far as I'm concerned, or my wallet or my agent is concerned, is trustable. It's another concept of emergency access. Uh, there are some groups that have, you know, kind of a, a break glass in case of emergency where we may have information that is, you know, secured, but in the event that I'm incapacitated, I'm unconscious, I'm, I'm in dire need of medical help, how do you get access to that information? Apple has started to explore this uh, with some of the Apple health work that they're doing. We get into login authentication. Um, I have revocation as a special case because it kind of has its own little world and, and, and the, we're pushing the report out by probably mid-December, uh, late November, mid-December um, to push this out. It'll be a lot more detailed on this, what, what I mean by revocation. There's a need for a backup and recovery. Clearly, we don't want to have a wallet that we lose that we cannot recover. I mean, that right now is the current state with my physical wallet. If I lose it, I'm kind of not dead, but it's painful to recover. 
Um, protocol plugins I don't want to deal with right now, but the idea is that, is that as things get in the agent level, we probably have different protocols we have to worry about talking through, you know, HL Indy, agent to agent. Um, once we get into, you know, partnering with other groups like Uport um, and then move up to a more, you know, direct, you know, standards based to full bull, you know, internet protocol level. We also know that there's trust execution capabilities and stuff. A lot of that's taken care of by storage. Um, disclosure engine, this is where we end up, you know, if somebody asks for uh, the following, I want uh, an address, I want a first name, last name, and a date of birth. I could assemble that from three or four totally different credentials, um, assemble that proof and punch it up. That's a graphical capability that we need to consider. We get into payments. Um, don't need to talk too much about verifiable credentials and their utility in this group, but it's clearly important. We need to also consider guardians and delegates. How do they fit into a wallet? What does it mean if you are a guardian and delegate, if you have delegated capability? Um, if you have delegated capabilities, meaning somebody has de delegated capabilities to you, what does it look like? What does your wallet do? And then I get into specifically the wallet services, which really comes down to key storage as well as encrypted storage. So keys would be all of your your, your private keys, you, the, the link secret, that kind of information that we would need to store in the, in the trust execution environment. And then using those keys, we would store the actual credentials, any you know, kind of digital receipts, that kind of stuff. And that would follow some kind of a wallet API. It's also a concept here of what I would call more like a vault. Um, to use a meat space analog, I certainly do not carry around all the cash that I, in theory, have access to. I usually have very little cash in my wallet, um, but I certainly have access to cash that is sitting at a bank for me. When I look at, you know, what, what does it look like to store and retrieve that information? Is there a cold storage concept? What about emergency access? Are these the folks that actually do some stuff? I know right now there are players in Canada right now that have electronic health records that do have that sort of break glass in case of emergency capability. All right, next slide, I'm gonna jump over to um, a more lightweight approach where kind of the wallet has some of these capabilities, but really we look to agents to, to um, handle a lot of these things. And we might have something that is effectively like, I don't know why it's red, but a routing agent, that's jo all its job is, is to find the other agents on, in my little domain network to say, hey, Daryl's phone is over here, his iPad's over here, um, just do that. So the wallet basically takes on a lot of the agent capabilities I think we normally talk about, and the agents become a lot more lightweight, just as a thought. Um, this trust registry and the trust hubs, this gets into something we discovered, uh, uh, John and Stephen, on, the, on the, the Vaughn project. We learned quickly that in order to trust the credentials that you're receiving, you need to be able to anchor back somewhere that's kind of a root of trust. Yes, I can go back and find that this is the DID for BC registries that's issuing a corporate, quali corporate registration, but how do I know that that did is not just spoofing as BC registries, it's actually the real BC registries. Uh, CU Ledger is another one where if we have a credit union um, issuing something, how do you know it's the real credit union? You need to go back to a list to say this is the definitive list of credit unions in Canada and credit unions and banks. And, and you can then I start asking business questions. Well, how do I know you're definitive? Well, we're managed under the Banking Act. These are, this is all the banks have agreed that this is the case and we have various different credit credentials alone just saying this is a trust hub. So that lets us establish, you know, that this is a real driver's license. This is a real credit union kind of thing. And the trust hubs kind of need to be consolidated into what I'm calling right now a trust registry. So that's what we have the, the vault, no wild difference there. And then I wanted to, just, to consider the absolute, what I would call the sort of the simplest agent and wallet where I think the bare minimum it needs to do is messaging, routing, be able to back up and recover, and then integrate a wallet again, key storage and encrypted storage, where that's kind of all the other capabilities just come off and we just say, okay, cool, this is the dumbest of dumb wallets. This is all it does. And we move that off to, you know, look for other capabilities and more agents and stuff like that to build from just kind of a thought process. One of the things that kind of comes up to me and it came up in, in many discussions at IIW and it has in the past a part of that is that if a wallet is just storage and an agent is just doing things on the wallet, are we really talking about, let's take the, the Evernim example, Connect Me, which uh, I think is at some point going to become open and become sort of a sovereign, quote, wallet. Is it a wallet? 
Is it an agent or is it just an app that has wallet and agent capabilities? Um, as I look at the wallet and agent capabilities, certainly the wallet itself is really, it's, there's stuff in, in, in the real world, meat space, that, that it does not do at all. It doesn't deal with where I'm putting the wallet. It doesn't deal with my hand that is taking stuff in and out of the wallet. It's reorganizing stuff. It also doesn't work out, work with me, which I'm looking at my wallet, messing around, taking cards out, putting them in different places. Um, when I travel, I carry a different wallet, um, that kind of thing. So I'm wondering if this is an app. I, I'm not sure what the terminology is. And that's what we're, we're kind of doing the thinking on the capabilities right now. But any feedback on, on where we think this needs to go would be would be fantastic. So my next steps, at least, um, I'm working with, uh, again, these few groups in Canada. Um, we're trying to, quote, complete. Uh, this, this is not going to be a uh, definitive canonical list. It's going to be the, you know, the, the state of thinking at the time, I'm sure. We're going to brainstorm and analyze, and anybody who wants to jump in is, is welcome to help. You know, what are the minimum capabilities? What is an agent versus a wallet versus an app? Um, where does that get clarified? And if you do want to want to participate and uh, get on a few sessions to discuss in more detail, you can reach out to me through Twitter at Daryl Lowe. And there's my email also on the uh, Slack, uh, Rocket Chat, a whole bunch of different places. You guys pretty much know where to find me.